In our series on I Deserve It, we, we saw a thief on the cross that deserved death, saw a woman caught in adultery that deserved condemnation. We saw Zacchaeus up a tree, deserved to be rejected. Uh, to, this week we see Peter, uh, who deserves to actually be left out. And all those things we deserve as well. And the, the thing about these little vignettes before is they, they show that they walk away before they see what they really get instead of what they deserve. And while we might deserve death, while we might deserve rejection, uh, condemnation, we have, re we have received instead life. We receive forgiveness and acceptance. And today, like Peter, we're going to see that we receive a second chance. When you think about failure, uh, we all have our failures. We all have where we've messed up, where we've fallen short, we haven't done well. Uh, I like Peter for this, that uh, I relate with him a lot. I'm quick to react to things, uh, shoot my mouth off before I really think about what I'm saying until too late. Uh, I, I think of Peter being someone who probably didn't ever relate with being a follower of Jesus and a preacher for that matter and and I was like that. I, re I remember thinking I wanted to just have a meat shop where I could provide really juicy marbled steaks. You see where I'm going with this, right? Uh, the, the greatest meat in the state of South Dakota. That was my dream. Peter was a fisherman. I'm sure he was into just providing for his family and for others, and, and yet Jesus called him. And yet that call came with some failures. I think of being called myself and going to seminary, and uh, one of the failures was, uh, there were many uh, in that setting for me, but I remember my first sermon, and I get it back from uh, pa Professor Picorni, and he said, Wade, at the very end, you used to butcher meat, now you butcher sermons. And we had a pretty good relationship, so I, I knew I could give him a hard time back, and I, I said I hate to correct an esteemed professor, but I used to cut meat, I butchered animals. And he wrote me back and said, you still butcher sermons. You know, it's like, uh, we can all think back and, and even maybe even recently of, of mistakes we've made, failures, uh, they, that weigh heavy on us, maybe even still today, that we're still paying the price for. It could be uh, the failure to take care of our bodies, and now we're paying the price. It could be the the failure of taking care of relationships or taking care of the family and neglecting what we should be doing with our children and, 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 or maybe other areas of our life. And there are consequences in a world that we live in. And yet, uh, whether it's finances or our bodies or whatever it is that we've neglected, uh, we learn today that we, as well as Peter, deserves to be left out. As it showed in here, there are no more second chances. We really don't deserve a second chance, and neither did Peter. We might wake up one morning and we've had dreams about our life and we realize that we haven't received what we would hope for, and we wonder, how did we get here? And I'm sure Peter was feeling that way as well, when we get into this uh, lesson today that uh, talks about Peter's failure, um, which there were many, but this one's very specific. And it says uh, in, in verse 54 of the 22nd chapter, and as, as we set this up, the context, uh, I don't want to forget, is Jesus had warned them that uh, tonight, he had told them, you're all going to fall away on account of me. And you remember Peter's reaction, right? He, he basically throws all of his buddies under the bus. He says, hey, I don't know about these guys, but I won't do that. 
I'm going to stand up. I'm going to be there no matter. I'll never deny you, Lord. And then we read what happens after he was arrested. It says, then they seized him and they led him, that is Jesus, away. And, and they took him into the house of the high priest. And Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. Wow. Uh, one of the, you know, there were several mistakes that Peter made, but I want to just point out two mistakes here today. And I think they're mistakes I know I can relate with, and maybe you can too. Uh, and, and the first one is that he had underestimated his own weaknesses. Peter was pretty arrogant. He was pretty confident, self-confident. Peter had thought that he was going to be the one that's going to stand up. Uh, and in fact, he had stood up. We're going to talk about that. But acknowledging our weaknesses, or if Peter had acknowledged his, that's really the first step to having true strength. I had a friend in California that uh, was really a, a guy I admired and looked up to. He was very loving, caring. He, he was very disciplined. He took real good care of his body. Uh, he cared about the people around him. Uh, but we would go to uh, games, like we went to Giants games out in Candlestick, and, and he, he would always drive. And I'm telling you, when he got in a car, he turned into somebody else. Those annoying drivers, everybody was an annoying driver around him, and, and he turned into a beast. Uh, and and I, I would look at him like, are you the same guy? See, he had a weakness there. And, and we all have those places where we react and we find our weaknesses uh, in life. And so uh, the first step, again, is... To, to, you know, to being strong is recognizing that we are truly weak and we need his help. The Apostle Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. And uh, it's only in, uh, as we are strong that, and, and there's a passage I'm going to look at with you here in, in a second. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, it says, so if you think... You are standing firm. Be careful that you don't fall. Paul wrote this to the Corinthians because, you know, he's talking about self-confidence rather than God-confidence. The rest of this passage talks about God will provide for you. But that's why it's important to recognize the weakness and then to trust in him rather than ourselves. Because that was Peter's downfall. He was looking at himself and what he could do. In fact, he was willing to stand up for Jesus. And he did in the garden, right? He took the sword and he cut off the soldier's ear. Do you know why he cut off soldier's ear? Because he was a terrible shot. Just kidding. Bad jokes. We do bad jokes here at Lord of Life. You get used to them. <laughs> he actually was willing to give his life. And Jesus, of course, heals this man, and he, he rebukes Peter again. He made another mistake, even though he was standing up for him. It wasn't quite the way God was looking for, or Jesus was looking for his disciples to stand up for him. Don't you realize I could call on so many angels that I could take care of this? I could take care of it myself. Put your sword away, Peter. So he was willing, but what happened? What happened? When we see in this text, what did he do? He followed at a what? At a distance. And as it says here, this distance is what created the problem. He was hiding. The reality uh, is that all of us are able to choose how close we're going to walk with Jesus. The scriptures tell us he stands at the door and he knocks and when we open that door, he is more than delighted to come in and sup with us and to sit with us and to be with us and to, to strengthen us. But if we want to live at a distance, if we want to watch from a distance, if we want 
the blessings and the comfort of the blessings, but not the sacrifice that goes with it, then like Peter, we might follow more at a distance. And that was where he started to have the biggest problem. When he was close, he took the sword. When he was further away, he now gets confronted. And in Luke chapter 22, verses 56 and following, it says, A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, uh, Certainly, this fellow was with him, for he is Galilean. And Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Now, in Matthew's gospel, this last part, he actually calls a curse. It gets translated that he cursed. It was with a curse, but it meant he called a curse on himself. May I be cursed if I am lying. I don't know who he was trying to convince at this point. Because he wasn't fooling anybody else. And then denial is where we can find ourselves a lot of times. You know... I don't have a problem with that. My life's doing well. My marriage is good. I'm, I'm doing fine. We put on those masks when we come in here. Everything's great. My finances are in order. We'll be able to take care of that. All these things are things we can be in denial about. And as, uh, as we look at this... Uh, Peter had a denial problem at this point. And then in Luke chapter 22, uh, halfway through verse 60, it says, Just as he was speaking of rooster crowed, the Lord turned and he looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and he whipped, wept bitterly. Man, I, uh, I think about that, and, and Jesus had already been beaten, mocked, spit upon. And so he's, he's looking out probably through swollen eyes, and it says that he looked at Peter. He looked at Peter. You know, I often wonder what it would be like to weep bitterly when we realize how sinful we are. When was the last time you, th you wept bitterly over your sin? I, I have a feeling that when we're at a distance and we're just kind of watching from the comfort of the blessings that we know we have, we don't really realize the gravity of our sinfulness. Peter at that moment, and, and that's why Lent is such an important season for us. That's why Holy Week is so important to go through and be a part of, because we need to look at our Lord suffering and dying for us. When we look at that cross, when we look at his face and he looks at us, we don't see him condemning us. We see him loving us. It, it was the love of Jesus looking at Peter, still caring about him, still wanting him, not chewing him out, but just looking at him as he looks upon us with love. And he cries out, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what we have in regard to our Lenten journey. That's what we get. See, the restoration story I just put on here, I want you to go home, read the restoration. 
It's in chapter 21 of John's Gospel. Just meditate on that. He doesn't condemn Peter. He doesn't uh, criticize him. doesn't give up on him. You see, that's why I put here on your outline, failure is an event, not a person. Never a person. In Jesus, we're not failures. We may have events of failure, but we're not failures. Peter wasn't a failure. How many know Evie Hill? Evie Hill, great uh, preacher. He's a black man, big guy, and man, can he preach. I remember his sermons. When I hear one of his sermons, I always remember him because of the way he preached. When Jesus was being tempted out in the desert, he would use this, uh, what, how did Jesus respond to the devil? He hit him, and then he had us all chanting, hit him. Uh, this other sermon, I never forget this. He says, never put a period where God puts a comma. Now, you've got to do this Evie Hill style. Never put a period where God puts a comma. You guys don't know what to do with that, do you? <laughs> Come on, work at it here with me a little bit. Never put a period where God puts a comma. Amen. Hey, there you go. There you go. But you got to know what to do with it. You know, you don't put a period where, God, I've messed up my life so much. I, I neglected my family to the point that it can't be repaired. Period? No. Why? Because God has healing. I've messed up that relationship that I have had with these people because I've done such stupid things. Comma. Why? Because there's another chance. There's always repentance. There's always confession and forgiveness. And there's, there's always the ministry of reconciliation that he calls us to. You know, Peter was called to become a preacher instead of a fisherman. A fisher of men rather than a fisher of the smelly fish. Peter was asked to be the, the featured speaker at Pentecost. Why? Because he was the most qualified. If anybody can understand getting a second chance, it was Peter. If anyone could preach the grace and love and forgiveness of Jesus, it was Peter. That's why he was qualified. Because he was restored. He was given another chance. What did Peter lose? He lost his arrogance. He lost his his self-confidence. Uh, he, he lost his focus on Peter, and in place of it, he received from God a faithfulness, a confidence that was born in what God could do, not what he could do. And as we know, uh, in 1 Peter 4.16, it says uh, that, however, if, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Peter died on a cross. Not like Jesus. He, was, he had received humility. He said, hang me upside down. God confidence. He died hanging upside down on a cross. Dear friends in Christ, we all deserve, like Peter, to be left out. But instead, we've received another chance. And God doesn't give up on us. He doesn't put a period. He works with the commas. In Jesus' name, amen.